what are the factors of personality? People spend a lot of money in this whole field of personality types and behavior. It really is a, an amount of money. If you go into any bookstore or any library, you will see a giant section on self-help books. You're going to sit down and do this, do this, do this, or try to understand this person. You don't understand why they're doing that. This is an area of interest and frustrating. Just so you know, my actual training is as a financial analyst, and I'm rather good at it, except for the fact that 2 plus 2 is always 4. I can deal with a person, and that person could be this person on Monday, and this person on Tuesday, and this person on Wednesday. People are much more complex than simple numbers. I really shifted from my focus from being a chief business officer to being a chief human resource officer. I just find people more interesting. We really need to focus in on a couple things on personality because if you are in management, I promise you, you will deal with every type of oddball character. Oh, excuse me. It's an oddball character from your perspective. Well, actually, yes, that's how it works. We have a tendency to focus in as to our values and how we were raised. And all of a sudden, we have these glasses that we put on without even knowing it. And we're looking for somebody that's like us. Sometimes you, you can have somebody that's like you. They may be a different race, a different, entirely different personality from the other side of planet Earth, but they're like you in a lot of different ways. We'll talk about those same ways. And we always have a tendency to gravitate towards that in every single situation, except some of us, when we take the time out to look at the individual as to who and what they are, I don't know about you, I enjoy talking to people that are very different from myself because of the fact that I'd like to hear what they have to say and their perspective on things. That is what I find most fascinating about people. I hope that you can reach a point where you enjoy that as well. So that being said, let's look at some of the different aspects of it. There's three different types of tests. I think you should take all three of them and make certain that you sit down and figure out who you are as an individual. I think that the aspect of testing yourself and getting more information about yourself helps you a lot as a manager, especially as a leader. If you want to understand the people you're working with, number one, you need to understand yourself. Because no matter what happens, somebody they just might grind you the wrong way and you don't know why, and it may not be them. It could be you, and maybe there's an area that maybe you need to be refined in a little bit and pay attention to it. I know, I know, yes, I'm going contrary to all the positive psychology that would think everything that we do is all positive. No, it really isn't. Sometimes we sit down and need to go back and do some self-reflection as to who we are on the inside and pay attention to how we're responding and why we're responding. That's why I think the Myers-Briggs, Straight Finder, and the Big Five Personal Dimensions, I think all three of them are excellent tests. I think we need to do some core self-evaluations. And above all, emotional intelligence is a big deal. So we'll talk about that. That is a giant issue, and I think we need that a lot more today than we've ever seen before in the history of the United States, maybe even the world. So personality theories, here's actually one created by AI, a chart. In essence, what you're looking at is they almost all evolve around the aspect of the extroverted axis, as well as the whole aspect of emotional stability. This is not new. It wasn't developed by Carl Jung. It wasn't developed anything in this century. It was actually developed by Socrates and Aristotle going back about three to three and a half thousand years when they actually did the experimentation on, the, on this whole aspect of it. Then I'll, I'll let you, I'll spare you the details about the experimentation they did, but they really helped define that. Whenever you see four different groupings of personality types, and we'll talk about those because all three of these have the four different groupings, you'll see that it really goes back to an ancient theory. It's called the four temperaments, and it really does come down to that. You'll see the Myers-Briggs has 16. Oh, but wait a minute. The 16 is four, 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 four. So it's got four different segments and components, and almost all of them will see that. Whenever you see the four components, you're relying upon this dual axis theory of extroversion, introversion, and as well as emotional stability in the process. So the Myers-Briggs type is probably the most used 
use. And frankly, it's the one that I trust the most at helping define people. And yes, everybody comes out with their latest one. Here, mine, mine will help you an awful lot. Well, all it is is a rehash, in my opinion, of a lot of the old theories. And they come out with a new book trying to make their million dollars. And more power to them. But this is my recommendation here. I think this is the best test that's out there. It really is based on Carol Jung's theory on psychological types, except for the fact that it really is not. It's really based upon going back those 3,000 years. And that's why, historically, this has been one of the greatest, most powerful tools on helping understand people. It looks as to how we perceive the world and make decisions. You really focus in on the extroversion, introversion, and that really does have an awful lot. In our society, I... I Think, I truly believe that we're probably split half and half, half extroverts and half introverts, except a lot of the introverts see the extroverts getting more attention, so they tend to turn themselves into more extroverted, and so now we have about a 70-30 split. I've seen some great leadership coming out of introverts. They're much quieter in the process because of the fact that it's their nature to be quieter, and they have different methodologies. And the Myers-Briggs talks about the aspect of Probably the simplest way to determine which one you are is if you're if you invited to go to a party, most extroverts groan about going, but when they go, they have a good time. The introverts, they're invited to a party and they're excited about going, but when they go, they have a horrible time and they withdraw. So you, it, it depends how you get your energy. There's a lot more to this. I encourage you to explore the Myers-Briggs temperament indicator. The sensing the intuition, it's about the focus on the facts and possibilities. There's some people, I need to have all the facts. Another one says, well, my gut says. And it just depends who you are. The thinking, feeling component, that really helps you. And, and some of these, I have, I, I'm a borderline, especially on this one over here. Normally, I like to have my brain fully engaged and think about it. But I have a close component to feeling, believe it or not, and the judging person's perceiving. You make a decision or you wait until the last minute. These are the four dichotomies, the different dimensions in the Myers-Briggs test. So the applications of benefit, I've gone through multiple testing on this one here. And really, it's phenomenal in the aspect of you're looking at it, but I recommend that you do it on your own. But I also recommend you do it in the workplace as well, because when you do it on your own, it's a self-exploration tool. When you do it in the workplace, you can see what everybody else is. It really helps you understand their strengths and weaknesses in the areas. So it enhances communication because you realize who they are. And sometimes it's like putting on a brand new pair of glasses after not seeing for a long period of time well. And all of a sudden, now this person, you can see who they are with perfect clarity and why they respond to you the way that they do, and why you respond to them the way that you do. So another one is called Strengths Finder. It used to be called Strength Quest when it first came out. It really is done by uh, Clifton and Gallup, and it focuses really on taking those four different quadrants and putting them into, believe it or not, a whole 34 different strengths. And it categorizes into the four domains again. You'll see executing, influencing, relationship, and strategic. They all have that in there. And what's nice about this one is it'll give you a test. It'll give you the top five that you have. But actually, there's actually the top 10, but they only reveal the first five initially. I took this, and, and being the C-suite executive, I took this uh, back when I was the vice president, and as a vice president, the first time I took it, I was a bit surprised as to who I am. But I was, but the second year we took exactly the same test. All of a sudden, I could see why I was interacting, and I changed how we worked with them, and we got along much better the second time because we all got a flavor of ourselves as well as our team. Each person has a unique combination of strengths, kind of like how we're made and created. That being said, I believe that each person is totally unique. We're different. Even if we're identical twins, there's certain things that make us different. And I think we need to sit down and respect the individual as to who they are. It really helps a lot on personal development for you as an individual, leadership training, and a big thing on team building. And it can help leverage the strengths well, he's got this strategic over here. He's got that relationship thing. That works really good in committee. And you can talk about the different aspects of it if you can have honest conversations. And a lot of times, once you do this, you can. On the big five, 
extroversion, the amount of agreeableness, conscientiousness, the emotional stability, openness to experience. You have a lot of this going on, and it really goes back to the, the four different elements, but they have five dimensions, and they have a couple that kind of overlap in the process. That really is good because you're looking at some core self-evaluation. I can or can't do this task. I like or dislike myself. I am not the captain of my faith, or maybe I am. I'm fairly secure. So you're looking at some of the different traits that you're seeing in the aspect. So on all these ways that you can boost self-esteem, I believe take the test yourself, know yourself thoroughly, and then once you're part of a team, you're part of leadership, take it together and talk about it. Talk about the strengths, weaknesses that you have. Whatever your focus is, have dialogue because having dialogue as to how you get things done is what business and work is all about. Provide positive feedback. I believe that you shouldn't be tearing people down but building them up. Break larger projects into smaller tasks and projects because not everybody has the capacity to see the big picture and express confidence that you can do that. You've got this. Part of coaching today is, is being the manager. Instead of being the manager and a coach, it's almost the opposite now. We have a different aspect that the manager needs to coach the employees in the group and become that coach and, and cheer them on. And when they have a weakness, you help them overcome it, help them self-identify it, and get them focused in as to what you want them to become in the process. So really, by the time we're all done, Almost all of these depend on the introversion, extroversion axis and the emotional stability. Myers-Briggs is one of the most accurate. The Strength Finder has millions of people they've documented taking this. It really is an excellent tool. Explore all of, all of these if you're serious about being a future leader. Know who you are and then learn who the people you work with are as well. And then you can work and have a shared vision as you know each other's strengths, weaknesses, and you start building that big relationship that you have with them that you want to keep and turn you into a high-functioning leader and a high-functioning team. Take care.